Hey guys, what's going on? SmartHelping.com here. I'm Jay, and we're going to format a, an income statement in Excel here. Uh, fun stuff. It'll look professional. I'll also upload it um, in a G sheet and put it in the link description box below. Before we get into that, don't forget to check out more financial models and spreadsheets at SmartHelping.com. Usually I build uh, startup models with all kinds of logic and assumptions and different things to forecast uh, revenue, expenses. I've got three statement modeling in here, all kinds of different things. Um, so check it out. You can buy uh, all kinds of bundle templates. You can buy them individually. You can buy everything on the site for $9.99. And remember, lifetime access for any bundle and anything I add to the bundle you have access to forever. Okay, so let's get into this um, income statement. So we're basically going to utilize uh, cell positioning, the bold function, and uh, underline. And it's pretty simple. So income statement, the formatting goes. First, you got to say what it is. So you put income statement up at the top here. You'll put the company name. And then you'll put for period, ending, and then whatever it's for, you know, for period, ending, and you could put, uh, you know, it could be for year ending December 31st, 2022, or for period ending January, if it's just for a month, January uh, 31st, or sorry. How many days does January have? It actually is important to name the day 31. So I can put for period end in January 31, 2022. So this is the main three titles that go at the top. And then to format them, you know, I like to, it depends on how many periods you're showing over. Um, you can keep them left justified. You could put them in the center. Uh, we'll keep them right here. And also we go to view, remove grid line, so it looks nice and neat. So income statement, the, the main items you have are first revenue. And so that's going to be bolded. Also, let's make actually these titles a little bit bigger. 14. So revenue. And then what we'll do is we'll have a we'll move this over and we'll actually have our revenue items indented we do six and you got item one Oop, that does not need to be bolded and it should be right same text as above 11 so you got let's say four revenue items and then you go back out for another bold and you say total revenue Now you could have other contra revenue items in here. Um, so we could have total revenue, then we could have maybe refunds. Uh, I'll, I'll just do it here. So hold on one second. And here we want a top border. And I'll show you the items. So let's say, you know, whatever it might be, and we sum that up. So here's your total revenue. We'll put everything in number format, and we'll say number, remove decimals, and we'll say up at the top here, uh, values in USD. That does not need to be bolded. Okay, and then let's say this is your period. So we're going to go January 31. Now you might have, like I said, uh, 
other revenue items. Let's say you have a couple more. Let's say you have uh, refunds uh, lost to lease if it's a rental company. Um, all kinds of different things. And then these would be negative. And let's say, and if it's if it's a negative item on a pot, normally positive section, then you can put a negative there. And we'll use brackets on all these. And then the format, actually, the best format to use is custom. And you scroll down, you want to use the one right here where it has dashes for zeros, no dollar sign. So that way, if it is a zero, you can see a nice little dash. Okay, so you've got these other revenue items. Oh, and these all need to be indented. Now you want to kind of, the way you do indenting, if you've got a whole bunch of different things, is you want to keep your subtotals and, and um, titles in the same indent line here. And then these are all going to be indented. I'll put uh, total other items. Oops. Let's make this a little bit smaller than the top. Okay, and then I've got uh, now down here, we'll go net revenue. And because this is a subtotal of the entire section and it doesn't match any other line, usually you'll see this actually ind indented more than anything else. So we'll go net revenue. Now this is going to get a top and a double bottom border. Because we're totally, this is like the total net of the revenue section. Now I don't like to put colors, but except for grayscale, so I'll do light, maybe a light gray for that to subtotal. Uh, and then, yeah, now that I can see this, usually you'll see this centered. It depends on how far over you're going, how many periods you're showing, if it's monthly or yearly, but um, usually you'll see this centered over the top. Now I've got other items here, so, but same formatting, and actually bring this up above. And I'll have expenses, and I'd like to put two spaces in between each major section. So here is your expenses, item one, two, three, total expenses. These are operating expenses. And you probably have a, a bit more of these, but we're just putting in placeholders. Okay, total expenses. And then if we keep going down the line here, let me zoom out a little bit. What a couple more expense rows. Okay, that's good, that's good. Um, We'll do the same format for this. Okay. Sum up all of these. Now, the next part of this, so we've got revenue, and you could go over, like if you had more periods, you just, you can scroll over, uh, format these a little bit wider, and then maybe on this, you might put the income statement in the corner more, or justified on this row, but left justified, kind of like this. This is probably a com common uh, style. Uh, we'll put, now if you're doing multiple periods, 
we put for periods ending January 31st to, in this case, December. And I got to fix, this should be end of month. C8 comma one. Whatever the end of your month is, December 31, 2022. So that's be that'd be the format if you have multiple periods. Okay. And the main thing is you just want to see here's my section, here's the subtotal items, here's the total section. Here's my new section, subtotals indented, here's the totals for that. And then here's a total for the entire section. And this shows you basically one side subsection of other revenue. You might not have that, so net revenue would be over here, you know, under this. Or you could just use this line and you don't need to do anything else. Uh, so expenses. <clears throat> now, next up we have, you know, it depends on the business. You might have debt service or whatever, but the same exact format is, is followed. We're just going to put... Um, well, we could do this a couple different ways. Let's let's show uh, this is going to be EBITDA, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization, just revenue, net revenue minus uh, expenses. Now here is a this is should stand out top, so we want top and double bottom, maybe a darker gray. And we're going all the way back to the left justification because this is essentially your subtotal of everything here. <clears throat> okay, and then let's go down. You might have other items after that. Let's say you've got... Um, Typically, you'll see maybe depreciation, interest, and you can label this a couple different ways. Uh, I'm trying to think of the most common. Also, we want if we want to view and freeze this, we can at the corner so we can see over and down. Now, this could also be or or net operating income depend on the business i guess we could just go straight from ebitda to ebit so you can put in your depreciation amortization items and let's say there's just three here and then we subtotal, same style. Total depreciation, amortization. And when you're doing this, the most important thing is things are clear. And it's easy to understand. I spelled this wrong, depreciation. Okay, whatever that is. Um, and then you'll do another subtotal for, um, and well, then you'll have this. Now you've got earnings before interest and taxes. So you go this minus here. These are usually non-cash items. And then we can continue on down to now interest is kind of its own thing. It's not in depreciation or amortization. But we can put in <clears throat> interest. And I mean, usually it's just going to be one item.
but it could be it depends you could have different sources of, of interest expense total interest and then you've got we'll go all the way down to I'm trying to think if we keep this on the, the same row because we're not going to show taxable income on the income statement. We're just going to go right to it. So you've got earnings before interest tax. Um, we could put taxes, interest here. Get these formatted over. whatever those numbers might be. And then you've got net income. So net comes the grand total. And uh, so EBITDA minus this. Now net income, we're gonna go top, thick bottom. Sometimes I've even seen thick top and thick bottom border. We're going to stay to the left. We'll make this darker. The point is you're making the line item stand out because it's important. Now, how far do we have to zoom out to see this? Let's delete some of these. Okay, there we can actually go right down the net income. So there's your general format for the income statement. You'll have all, if you're doing financial modeling, you'll have all kinds of different logic that's informing all these numbers. But here's just a general formatting tip. Uh, I think I covered everything. I'm just looking at the indenting on these subtotals. So I like this, this looks good. Then we come out, out and out. Uh, honestly, though, I think this should be on the same line as as the top section for revenue and expenses. And on these, we'll go all the way over. Yeah, that looks better. Um, in general, you're just trying to be consistent with your formatting throughout the model. Uh, right. Um, oh, you know what? On this, let's let's make this a bit more simplified. So total expenses here. We don't want double bottom. We just want no. We want top borders here. And then you get the, the thick. And then this can actually be light gray. Same with this. And then this is good. We'll keep that dark. Okay, so that's good. Congruent. There, there. That's that subtotal. Then you have this. Actually, we don't even really need to put a bold on this, or I mean a, a, a gray on these, because they have the, the line subtotal. Okay, yeah, this is, this is good. Now, I mean, no one's going to care if your stuff isn't formatted perfectly. They generally are worried about the numbers, but you do want to come off professional. And so you kind of want to keep your formatting very consistent. And, um, you know, this is a pretty good style to use. All right. Well, that's all I got for you on this one. I'll, like I said, I'll have the link in, in a Google Doc. And uh, don't forget, check out more stuff. Again, smarthealthly.com. Uh, I've got all kinds of. Of, of templates and financial models and tools for 
accountants and finance people. So enjoy.